There we go. There's our poster for area training. And of course, I've got my Christmas CD music out for everybody. Right, so I just want to give out a little bit of information before we start our training with our guest speakers tonight. So, this is the last call of the year. And then we kickstart our calls back again on. I should have looked at that, shouldn't I? Should have looked at the date beforehand. Hang on, let me look now. Let me see. Sunday the 8th. So we start back again on Sunday the 8th. Right, so in the meantime, I have put together a few documents to help everybody for 2017. So if you go into the Do More page and you'll see the pinned post, which is always at the top of the page, open up the pinned post and let me just get it open. You'll just scroll down really, not very far, just a little bit down here, and you'll see my Google Drive. If you open up my Google Drive, it will open up these little folders here. And if you go into folder 2017, what you'll see is some documents that I've put together. So in those documents, you've got the 2017 calendar for the whole year. So I've printed mine out, and I know a lot of other people have, and then I've put into my diary every single one of these dates for the whole year, so I know exactly where I am, yeah, that's all in there. And then I've also got a 2017 plan. This is a few when we had coffee and cake the other morning. There are a few things that you can have a look at to do. You don't have to do all of them. They're just ideas things to do over Christmas to help move your business along a little bit. So, for example, make your vision board or update it. Hold your own digital arm. Go through the pinned post and have a look at some of the links on there. Do your active candidate list, print out the Mexico trip. I know it says Cyprus on that minute, but it's supposed to say Mexico. Buy a diary and fill in all of the dates for 2017. Have a look at a business page if you've not already made one. Do your goal card and go through the Arbonne University. So there's just a few ideas in that. And then also on the page, there's just a few things to fill in. A bit of a review about what you've done with your year. So if you print this out and start ticking off what you've done between now and the new year, so a couple of weeks to go through this, bring it with you on retraining on Monday the 2nd of January when we all meet up at the Crown. Bring that with you so that we can go through it. So that's Monday the 2nd. We're all going to meet up in Melton Mowbray. That is a bank holiday, um, but it's fine. And um, I'm actually bringing my kids to that because I've not got school the next day. So I'm going to bring them along. So if anybody wants to bring their children, feel free. Uh, those that haven't got school the next day. So bring your 2017 plan along with you. Also, we've got a tracker that the gorgeous Jennifer Cowie put together. Um, there are a lot of things on there from top to bottom. Don't for a second expect you to do every single one. Just do what you're able to do and then stretch yourself. So if you look at that list and think, well, there's four things on there that I'm, I can do. So do those four and then stretch yourself and add on an extra one or an extra two until it becomes a habit. So that's the tracker. So that's our system. So if anybody's wondering what our system is, this is our system. So that's good to print off. It's got all of the months, all of the days of the month on, so you can tick them off as you go. And then lastly, We've got an annual incentive. So rather than doing sporadic incentives, we've put together an annual incentive to do on a point system. So this is worth printing off so that you've got it. Stick it up in your office space so that you know what you need to do to earn points throughout the year and what you're going to get in December next year based on the build-up of the points that you've got. So I'm not going to go through all that now because I've already done a video on that anyway, but that's all in there. Um, I also want to give a massive shout out to some of the guys that are going area call this month. So we've got Carl and Carpenter. So CJ's going area this month. 
We've got Carol Sutton Houghton, 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 going area call this month, but she's so close as well. We've got Natalie Crawford, also really close to area call, and Stacey Blackley. So we've got a lot of people that are literally building massive momentum in their business this month. So that is just huge, absolutely huge. I'm so, so, so proud of everybody that's building their business at the minute and absolutely going for it. So, oh, I've just seen on the chat my mic's going. How is it now? Is it fine now? Yeah, okay. Okay, so our first trainer for tonight for our area training is the gorgeous Kat Thray. So Kat came storming into the business this year. She joined in Jess Meach's district and the Jennifer Cowie area. Je uh, Kat is an absolute sensation. So we've all followed her videos. We've all followed the advice that she gives. She's just so our team as well. Like she couldn't have been any more perfect for our team. When she came along, she was just the most giving, open to everybody, willing to share, willing to help, willing to be vulnerable as well, and not just talk about the great things, but also the lows and how she's battled through those lows as well. So Kat is just an amazing, an amazing person. And she's going to train tonight on the law of attraction. So I'm really, really looking forward to this. So please welcome almost district manager this month, Kat Thwaites. Well, it's been, it doesn't surprise me. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> so my training is on law of attraction. I wasn't quite sure um, what to call it. So I took my training from the book Lucky Bitch by Denise Duffield Thomas. So we've all seen them crazy competitions on the telly or in magazines. And I'm sure we've all thought at some point who actually wins those. Um, a lot of us assume that it's a scam and we're very used to hearing this um, when we present the business to people. Oh, it's a scam. It's a pyramid scheme. It's too good to be true. Um, Denise talks about entering one of them crazy competitions and actually winning, but most importantly, how she went about it. So the law of attraction in action. Nothing we do in life or our art on businesses is down to mere luck. Denise used the law of attraction techniques to attract her dream and to actually achieve it. The first lesson is you can manifest. So if you don't know what manifest means, because I do. <laughs> wow, what was that? I had to Google it. So it means um, to show, act, feel, or demonstrate an opportunity. So, but you also have to take extra steps of courage to actually claim them. So we all know personal development is so important with this and to be committed to it. Some books Denise mentions are Tony Robbins, Unleash the Power Within, Think and Grow Rich and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. These books are great for keeping and helping with staying positive. It's important you realise that personal, personal development books and seminars won't always be enough for you to move forward closer to your goals, but it is an imp important part. We must all remember not to blame ourselves and think that there's something wrong with us as that easily happens. Sorry, I'm going to move this up. <laughs> um, if, you, if you are ready to take the next step towards your goal, then have you told the universe? This is a small affirmation, but it's so powerful. So if you haven't yet, then I want you to all tell the universe right now or after this call, I am ready for the next step. Do you listen to nudges from the universe and then act on them? It's all good and well listening to them, but without acting, it's not going to move you forward. So Denise went on a course and her mentor asked everyone there to write down their vision of their own ideal day. This is similar to how we do our vision boards, but this way you can visualise it in more detail. So if you take nothing else from what I'm saying tonight, then please go away and write down your ideal day in the most vivid detail you can imagine. It will change your life. When you read it out loud, it will probably sound ridiculous and incredibly unrealistic. Always keep your ideal day in your head and go back to it or read it through. This is the most, this is a great way of, to use such a powerful affirmation process. Denise talks about anchoring every positive experience to attract more. 
So whatever the experience may be, make sure you're fully open and aware of it and create them routes to keep the experience anchored down. Another hard thing is when reality hits in after experiencing what's possible. You need to remain focused on what you want, not what you don't want. A good way of doing this is to tell everyone who's willing to listen about it as if you're already doing it. So for example, if your goal is to go to Mexico in October, tell everyone about it. Tell them how you, how you feel, how excited you are, what you're going to do, absolutely everything. Confidently talking about your dream as if it's already a reality is a great way to declare it to the universe. And it also holds you liable to sticking to what you've said. Next, write down your goals as specific as possible. So not just your big end goal, um, but all them goals that are in between you and that end goal. They are all so important. Have you ever looked at someone else or heard of someone else's personal experience and got the jealousy feeling about it? Have you ended up thinking to yourself, damn, they're so lucky, why can't that happen for me? Well, let me tell you now, that's completely normal. We're human, but you need to put an end to that resentment as it's not going to get you anywhere. Acknowledge it and then make a new affirmation from it. So something like, Good things are happening for me too. My lucky break is just around the corner. This will make you feel slightly better, but don't worry, as it's natural to compare ourselves to, to others, but the best thing to do is to wish them best and feel happy for them, knowing that you deserve good things too and it's just around the corner. We don't always see everything we need or want, so by telling all of our positive friends, about our wildest dreams, it increases the chances of good things coming our way. We all face hurdles in life and our businesses, no matter what, but being persistent and committed through them is key. A great thing to do if you're going for an important goal is to put it on your calendar right now or at the end of this or preferably at the beginning of the month. So Never ever give up believing that this or any opportunity is a gift from the universe. It's yours for the taking, so don't let fear or doubt sabotage that. Also, don't be that attached to it to the point it's becoming desperation. Always visualise your success along your journey. Use the power of your unconscious mind through creative visualisation. We've all heard this a million times before, but do we commit to doing it daily? It's so powerful and you're only limited by your creative imagination. Beware of your thoughts constantly because negative visualisation works just as powerfully as a positive one. Without meaning to, we often imagine the worst happening. So you use that power for good, not evil. Are you absolutely obsessed every moment with your dream coming true? Are your thoughts consumed with it? I completely understand we all have busy day-to-day -day lives and life happens. So keeping up that level of obsession every single day is hard to do, which is fine. Some goals are more important and urgent than others. So if you want to move fast to manifest what you want, make it a priority to visualize it every day, all day long. Every law, law of attraction book tells you that thinking is not enough. You have to feel it as well. So you need to get into the space of living before it actually shows up in real life. So start acting like an MVP. Feel the way you think it feels to be an MVP. It will make a huge improvement to your manifesting ability because the universe gives you more of what you already are. Consciously manipulate your emotions to pretend it has already happened. Get yourself into that space every day. So basically live every day like you're an MVP. Do things you've never done before or had the confidence to do before. Step out of your comfort zone. Don't worry if some things are embarrassing. Just keep going. Not everyone is going to be supportive of your dreams. You may get some backlash, but that's fine. Use it to fuel you, not stop you. It's so important to surround yourself with constant positivity. Nothing is too small or unimportant. Every activity compounds and who knows which action will make the ultimate difference. So throw everything at it, no matter how out of this world it seems or sounds. 
Remember, the only competition we face is not allowing fear, doubt or anxiety to creep in. Remember to always be yourself and true to yourself. There's all, there will always be unseen preparation and planning behind almost any success, but it's always within reach. Do everything you can think of to guarantee your success. So, there's no luck, it's just preparation and teamwork. So to finish off, here are some of the lessons I've learned, and it's just from the first chapter. So, I don't know if you want to write these down. Um, decide now, you'll never give up. It's hard, but it's 100% worth it. Don't give up on your dreams if one possibility shuts down. Keep your belief right up until the last second. Teamwork makes the dream work. Do everything you can think of to guarantee your success. Every waking moment, every little anchor helps. Turbocharge your affirmations. Always be persistent. Tell everyone about your wildest dreams. And most importantly, tell the universe you're ready. And then I've just got two little quotes that I think are pretty, I think they fit perfectly for this. So the first one by Walt Disney, and it is, when you believe in a thing, believe in it all the way, implicitly and unquestionable. And then, I'm not, I don't always keep up very well with my reading, I'm guilty of that, but I do like to surf the internet a lot. <laughs> so I go on Google and I find all these like inspiration quotes. So I actually have one as my background, and it says, I do it because I can, I can because I want to, I want to because you said I couldn't. And that's it. Thank you. Wow, Kat, that was incredible. You can see why you are about to be a district manager. You've totally gone up a whole nother level since the last time I saw you do your trainings. And I haven't seen any, I haven't seen any recent recordings of your trainings. Where are they all? I, I haven't really done any. <laughs> They're so good. They're really, really good. So I took loads of notes from what you said. Um, Jen says that she calls um, what you called your... Um, well, you said lucky bitch. I was trying to think of another way to get around that. <laughs> she says she calls it lucky ducks. So that's what they said they call it. I suppose that's a bit more child friendly. I mean, you better say yeah. that around Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Mexico thing. On that, everybody said, yeah, 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 I'm going. I just wanted to, off the cuff of what Kat said, make sure you've registered this month because if you've not registered this month, you don't get the double points in December. So if you've not already registered, you need to go onto the website, your own website, and click in to register, and then you get the double points. So Kat reminded me of that. And I really loved what you said. The two things I really, really, really took from that was it's hard, but it's 100% worth it. Oh my God, that's like parenting, isn't it? Yeah, it's hard, but it's worth it. Same as this business. And I really loved, don't give up on your dreams, even if 1% shuts down. I love that. Yes, no. Yeah, I think Jess agrees. <laughs> Yeah, it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic, Kat. I'm so, so, so proud of you. And I think it was wonderful having you on the training tonight because you really do bring something so unique and so special. So thank you so much for that. Massive well thank done. Thank you. Okay, right. So after that fabulous training, we've got more. There's lots more in store. So next up, we have our very gorgeous Gemma. So Gemma lives in Melton Mowbray, the same as me. We met through her business, The Good Grub Company. So I did at one time used to buy all my fruit and veg and even meat from Gemma's business. Um, and then I stopped buying it and started being a bit lazy. So that was bad of me. And Gemma used to provide the flowers for our region training. And um, she, she, the business is closed down now. And it only occurred to me about a week ago, I went, Gemma, if you're not running your business anymore, where am I going to get my flowers from? I like, totally did not register at all. So I'm going to have to work something out there. I'm going to have to do Cat's Law of Attraction. Like something's going to happen so that I can uh, have ease with the flowers. So Gemma is mother of two. She's got Eliza and Lola, and she's going to train tonight on Last Minute Larry. And the reason why is because that isn't actually the title. But when I asked everybody for their titles, Gemma said, oh, I'm a Last Minute Larry. And I was like, well, I need to make the poster. So if you don't give me a title, that's what's going on the poster. So that is what went on the poster for that reason. So we're looking forward to hearing whatever Gemma's training is tonight. Please welcome District Manager in Qualification, Gemma Wilford. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Right, I'm just going to share my screen because I'm a, I'm a triangle, so I've done a little PowerPoint presentation that keeps me on track as well. So thank you. <laughs> um, I've not done this, so bear with me. Um, hang on, here we go. Right. Right, so I've named my training Don't Judge. Um, it's based on the SoundCloud from Tara Bransma, which was on about a month ago, um, and she's titled it Now's Your Time to Step Up. Um, I was going to train on something else, which is still in my head, but I can't get it out of my head and onto paper, so that's stored for another time. Then this one popped up that I listened to, and it completely resonated with me, because I think I'm completely guilty of this, and I'm sure I'm not the only one out there that is. Um, Tara, just a bit of background on her, she was very much in the corporate world, she was an accountant um, and she'd followed what her mum had always done and her mum had always worked incredibly hard and worked her way up the career ladder um, and she thought that was the thing to do because you follow what you're taught. Um, but she said it was very detrimental to her mother's health and she wasn't looking for Arbonne like a lot of people um, and it suddenly landed on her, her doorstep and she appreciated that she could get the time freedom from it, which was what she wanted and she wanted to be spending time with her family. Um, so that's just a little bit of background on her. So thinking about how we um, prospect, who we look at and who, who do we judge? We judge a lot of people um, and we need to not do that basically. So how many people are not on your 100 list for whatever reason? So is there a business owner that you've, you've, put to one side and thought they wouldn't be interested because of X, Y, Z. Um, I was a business owner. Emma Lee didn't approach me. She didn't think I'd be interested. Here I am. Um, high profile career woman or man, someone that you've not spoken to because you think, well, they're, they're skyrocketing in their career. They're not going to be interested. They wouldn't think about it. The GP that you see every week on the treadmill next to you at the local gym, you've probably spoken to them about the weather, about your holiday. Have you spoken to them about Arbonne? Or are you thinking, well, they're a doctor. They're not going to want to be interested in it. The sister-in-law who's just finished the vet's degree, she wants to go off and be a vet, doesn't she? So she wouldn't be interested in Arbonne, or would she? The new mum, they've got so much on their plate, they're not going to be thinking about setting up a new business, are they? The investor, they're already planning all of their efforts into their investments. So how many people have you got that you're thinking about that aren't on your list and why they're not on your list? Do we really know them? We don't. We don't know what goes on behind the scenes. We haven't got a clue. Do they want to spend more time with their family? Do they want more money? Do they want to be able to sleep more and not go out to work? Do they want more time freedom? Do they want to travel? We don't know. We've not asked those questions because we think it's not for them because we've judged them. So shift your focus. It's not about you. And that's one thing that really resonated with me when I listened to her SoundCloud. Um, and I completely got this. And it's, it's shifting and it's taking that selfishness out of it. And if you're scared to approach them, if you're scared to talk to them, they're going to miss out on something amazing because of something that you're not willing to do or you're not going to do. So it's not about you. You've got to take yourself out of the equation. Start thinking about what their best qualities are. So rather than looking at them and thinking, well, they wouldn't be interested because of this, that and the other, there's good in everybody. So find that good, think about what that good is and think about how that can be attributed to their Arbonne business and what they can do. Stop thinking about why they wouldn't do it and start thinking about why they would um, and why they would be amazing at it and why you would like them on, their on your team. And think about one thing she said was a melting pot, which I completely agree with. There's, I mean, with our um, Arbonne region, everybody is so, so different. And I think that, that kind of was highlighted at AAC when we did the whole squares, triangle, circles thing, squiggles. So create your own melting pot and everybody in your team will be completely different and should be completely different because they can bring different qualities in and they can teach you different things and you can learn different skills from them and you can understand how, how things work from all those different characters. So create your own melting pot. Think about your dream team and focus on your dream team and visualize your dream team. You want them on there for a reason. So go and talk to them. Um, so how do you share without the evidence? This was something that I, I've struggled with quite a bit. I don't, because my, my business is strong on my preferred clients and I'm fine with the products and I'm fine with that side, but I'm not that strong on the business side. And one of the things I felt that was holding me back was that, well, because I wasn't performing well enough, how can I share that with people and say, come and join me? Again, think about, it's not about you. Take you out of the equation. You've got to believe that that person that you want to sponsor 
that they're going to rock this business. Take you out of it. You've got to believe that they're going to just fly with it and that they can do it because of the skills that they've got. Use the stories of other people around you. Tap into what, what's going on. Make sure that you're attending events and showing up because you've then got that to link back to and show the fun that we're having and show the support that we've got. So even if you're not where you want to be in your business, there's, there's something that you can display to other people that you're talking to about it. Um, look at different iron bonds and make sure you're aware of what iron bonds are available so that you can then link it to the relevant person with the relevant background. Um, think about trips so we've seen the amazing photos of the bahamas make sure you're sharing that and so everyone can see it and they can see what fun they can have and what they could be achieving um training recognition and events attend all the events that you can and remember it's not about you it's about them so mindset seeing people in the best light so as i was saying earlier everybody's got good in them and it's about it's about highlighting that good and working out what, what that can bring to Arbonne. Um, she um, refers back to a book, um, Jack Canfield, The Success Principles, which I've not read yet, but I'm going to read it after listening to this SoundCloud. Um, and one of the chapters in there, I think she said it was chapter six, his earliest mentor was described as an inverse paranoid. And instead of believing that the world was plotting against him, he chose to believe that the world was plotting to do him good. So instead of seeing every difficult and challenging event as a negative, he saw it as what it was meant to be, to empower him or advance his cause. So if you fail, it's not a failure. It's just something to learn from. So if you're sat there and you're scared to talk to somebody in the coffee shop or you're scared to talk to somebody in the gym or you're scared to talk to your sister-in-law, just do it, learn from it, move forward, and that's a life event that's just set to, to make you grow. There's um, evidence that suggests that vibrations that successful people, successful positive expectations that they give off actually attract to them the very experiences they believe they're going to get. So it's back to what Kat was saying about affirmations and making sure we're putting out there to the universe what we want to get back. What do you think about when you're in the car and you're on the way to a one-to-one -one or you're on the way to a workshop? I personally, I sit in the car and I talk about how many PCs I'm going to sign up that day, how many people I'm going to share the business with, and how many people I'm going to talk to this, that, and the other. And I, I think about that the whole way while I'm on the journey. That's my time out where I don't have to listen to the kids in the background. I can actually focus on what I'm doing. So put it out there when you're off to a one-to-one -one that this is going to happen, and it will happen because you're giving out that positive vibe. Um, why? So um, why do it? Well. If you don't, then you're going to take away the chance of a great opportunity for somebody that you're thinking, that you're prejudging and, and you're thinking that they're, they're not interested. People want to be a part of something positive. They want to see what's, what, what you're doing. Um, we give out such a positive vibe on social media and when we're out and about and we're talking about Arbon. Um, and one thing that Tara was talking to one of her consultants about, she was saying that when you're at school, when you're at um, preschool and then through school and then high school, college, university, whatever it is you decide to do, you tend to be in groups and in sports teams and you're involved in something and you're part of something. Then when you go off and have a family or when you become a mum, that changes and that shifts and you don't always have that sort of team, that team feel. And if you go out into the workplace, it's very dog eat dog, a lot of jobs that are out there and you're all fighting for the top and there's not necessarily always a, a team feel. We've got that in our bond and that's something really positive that you can share with people that feel they don't kind of belong anywhere anymore because they don't have the, the netball team that they used to be part of or they don't have the, the choir that they were in. And Arbonne can give them that. It gives them that team approach back. We all want a holiday. Um, and if you've got people that you're thinking of that are really high up the career ladder, so they therefore go on holiday every two months and you think, well, they wouldn't really be that interested in that incentive. Would they be interested if it meant they got to go away with their friends for free? They probably would. So there's something that you can, you can um, think about when you're talking to people. If you think, well, they wouldn't be interested because they go on holiday every two months anyway. There's a different, different way of looking at it. Um, you can change someone's life for the better. So don't get in your own way and stop that from happening. So how? How are we going to do this? Um, the... The way you can, there's various different different um, kind of ideas here. So I'm personally in a bit of a financial situation at the moment, which is a bit interesting. With shutting down the business, 
we're taking a completely different turn of, of career and life and everything's going to change for us next year. For us as a family, it's going to mean that we're probably not going to be able to afford a holiday for a long time. So me personally, I'm speaking to friends and family and, and, and saying to them, I'm being straight with them and saying, look, we haven't had a holiday since whenever um, and we're probably not going to have a holiday now for the next three, four years. Mexico is my chance to be able to take my family away and I've been challenged to find eight people to help me out. It's really simple. All I need to do is just get in front of as many people as I possibly can to share the Arbon products. Would you be willing to help me out? I really want to take my family on this trip. So I'm going to be honest with people and just put that out there and let them know that that's what I'm trying to achieve. Um, would you be willing to sit down with me and listen for 20 minutes about the business opportunity? Not only we have the opportunity to earn extra income, but also an amazing trip just for helping other people. Would you get some people together so that I can share our one with them? It would mean the world to me if we could squeeze it in before, give them a date of when you want to do this by, might be a bit close to Christmas now to get anything in before Christmas, but you never know. Um, or you want to get it in before the end of the year because you're getting all your detox plans set up. Paint the picture as to why it would be great for them to do that, but also why it's important for you. And if you tell them why it's important for you to get it in before a certain date, then they're going to appreciate a bit more that it's not just a, oh, would you do a party for me? If you kind of stick, and, stick them to a date and let them know why that's important to you, and not a lot of people are going to let you down if they know that it's important to you. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, that's it. That's me. That's what I put together. And I've gone now. I don't have to get it back. Stop there. There you go. <laughs> Wow! Gemma! Gemma, 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 that was fabulous! Thank you. That's one. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I loved it. I really loved it. I loved it. It's not about you, the vibrations and your frequency, saying what you need to say in the car because if you put out those vibrations, you're going to attract like attracts like. It's so, so, so true. And I always think the same as what you said, Gemma, and echoing um, Kat, the law of attraction, whatever frequency we're on and whatever we're putting out there, we do bring that same sort of frequency and vibration back in. So make sure that we're taking ourselves out of the equation. It's not about us. It's about the other people. And it's so interesting that you did that talk tonight because I was having dinner this evening with Ian and the girls. We were out and this waiter, so it was a male waiter, and I think he must have been brought in as extra Christmas staff because he was so jolly. Like, there's no way he could have worked there. Like, oh, yeah, he definitely must have been temporary. And I said to Ian, guy, he's, like, really nice. He's, like, really nice, like, really, really helpful, really nice. I was, like, it's about 50. And I was, like, he'd never be interested in our bar. And I didn't say anything. Like, how crazy is that? <laughs> And now you've just done that training and who am I to judge? Like, I don't know if he you know, might go home and want to have more time or more of something. So yeah, perfect, perfect training. Um, and the last thing I want to say about your training, Gemma, is if you don't say anything to people, it's 100% a no. If you say something, it's a 50% a yes, a 50% a no. So just saying something makes that percentage bigger. If you say nothing, it's 100% a no anyway. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic training by you again, Gemma. You're just brilliant, absolutely amazing. You're just such an inspirational, incredible person. And shame on Emily waiting to talk to Gemma about this business. <laughs> he said, Oh, because I knew Gemma, she wouldn't talk to me either. So, yeah, <laughs> nearly missed out. <laughs> But then you managed to find the business and find the team anyway. You like knuckled your way in and we're so yeah. glad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. So next up, we've got the gorgeous CJ. So CJ is going to talk about what to do when disaster strikes from the book, Follow Your Heart. So those of us will know that's been following CJ's journey this week. She's had the most horrendous week ever. She is going into area quals. So it's kind of like that pendulum. I always say life is like a pendulum. When one side swings, which is great, the bad side size swings just as much and I took that from the book the breakthrough experience there's always um two sides to each coin so he's always going to be an equal amount of good or bad so poor CJ's had a horrendous amount of bad this week but it's going to equal itself up with some great great things that are about to happen so CJ's got two little boys and then I, th I don't know if Nate's in the background I can't see him at the minute you can usually see him on zoom <laughs> is he there <laughs> oh yeah there he usually is there so she's going to talk tonight on what to do when disaster strikes. So please welcome Executive District Manager, soon-to-be Area Manager, Carl-Ann Carpenter. 
Hello, hello everyone. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, so originally, um, when I was talking about doing this training, um, like a little while back, I was going to do it on um, some of the other aspects of the book. Um, but actually, following from what's happened this week, um, it seemed only appropriate to talk about what I know. Um, because then it does come from the heart. And this is probably one of the least scripted uh, Zooms I have ever done. Because usually I have a, um, I have loads and loads of notes and I chat. So um, we're going to go, I'm just going to go with it. Um, so let's, how do I, oof. There we go, lovely. Okay, so um, this is from the book Follow Your Heart by Andrew Matthews. Um, and so it's split into different sections, this book, um, and it's about finding purpose in your life and in work. Um, so why do I need disasters, the law of seeds, belief, attachment, why I think positive, doing what you love, make a start, luck, why are we here and when you change. So that's what the book split out into. And then you've got little stories um, that he uses and then he just sums it up as like in a nutshell um so i was going to look at talk today about why do i need disasters and the law of the seed but actually um i'm just going to talk about disasters uh. <laughs> she says okay so why we need disasters, lessons, living and learning. So I'm going to give you two examples um, of the lesson, the living and the learning of a disaster. So the first example is from the book. So when, uh, when he was a little boy, so when Andrew was a little boy, he had a ball. He had a football. He loved this football. He, he took the football to bed with him. He kicked it every day. He played with his friends with this football. This football was everything to him. And then one day he kicked it in the park too far, it was gone. He couldn't find it. And his whole little life, bless him, he, he, it all felt like it was the worst thing in the world for him. And he searched everywhere. He searched the trees, he searched the bushes, he searched everywhere. And he stumbled across a pregnant woman, nine months pregnant. And he goes up to this pregnant woman and he says, you stole my ball. And she was like, what? He, he said, you put it up your t-shirt. Can I have it back, please? And uh, she, he said, I, I haven't stolen your ball. He said, you have stolen my ball. It's my favourite ball. And anyway, she hadn't, obviously. Um, and so that day, he found his ball eventually and he went home. And what he said was actually that day, at 10 years old, he learnt something. So his disaster of losing his ball made him bump into a nine-month uh, pregnant woman. And that day he learnt where babies come from and what nine-month-old women look like. And he got, and so he learned from like living that disaster and a lesson from it as well. So it, it's an example of how something that can be so like devastating to us, it's a disaster, as small or as big as it might be, something that affects us. Um, we can learn lessons from it and it's, it's quite a weird how a roundabout it goes. So my example of this, many of you will definitely know because it's not, I haven't kept it quiet, but um, Last week, um, I was hacked, um, quite severely hacked, and it's still going on, and now the police are involved as well. Um, and basically, my bank account was wiped, um, and my personal and my business page were hacked and were taken over by a, by a cyber guy, basically. Um, and this was a disaster to me. Like, I had lost, like, within 24 hours, I had my bank wiped, I have, I st I have nil, like they took everything, all of my money, two weeks before Christmas and they've taken it all. They have, they had um, taken 10 years worth of memories and photos and my blogging of my life that I'd done on, you know, via Facebook, everything, you know, pre my marriage, pre my children, everything. So me, they, I felt like they had wiped out everybody, the person that I was. And then they cleared my, my business and have taken it over um, and are posting 
posting really random stuff on there and I can't get that back. I've been blocked from everything. And my poor clients are being affected by this because they're now seeing it all. They're having it all. Um, they're having their um, Facebook spammed with loads of random stuff. I had gold bags out in messengers um, via messenger. So my contact was only via them. I had, um, I had just done a 30 contact challenge. So I had random conversations going with lots of people. Um, and it, it was, it was to sum up, it was a disaster. And that was only one day. There had been like four or five different things throughout the week that had also happened, but we'll focus on that one thing. Um, however, the, yeah, it was a disaster. And I'm not going to lie, it was, it was really rubbish. However, the le there's lessons there. There's lessons to be learned. You know, I've got to think now, right, going forward, when I need to make manual copies, you know, and that's a lesson I can teach other people as well. You, you know, don't be so reliant on, on your social media accounts because actually one day they could just all go, like, and it does and it can happen. So make a paper trace and um, learn from it. You know, I'm, I'm now going to learn from everything that I'd learned before and how I managed to establish a, um, a business page for 15 months. And I've got to now channel it all back into that. Um, even though this all happened and it slowed down my months unbelievably, it kind of stopped my business for nearly, for nearly seven days. Um, and seven days where I was in really, really high momentum as well, really high. I learned how to use my phone in a different way. I learned how to call clients that I already had a call, uh, sheets for and I've learned how to text them over just messaging them on Facebook, which is something I hadn't done. I, you know, I stayed clear of that, but that was so far out of anything I was comfortable doing. But actually, I sent loads of messages um, and I'm chatting to a, a client that wasn't even on Facebook. So he kind of got slipped through the net because I was focusing on the ones that were on Facebook and not the ones I had mobile contact numbers with. And he's like, yeah, I'm reordering in March. So you messaged me back then. So I've got to put that in my diary now. So basically, um, in a nutshell, we reach for points in our life when we are ready for new information. And until then, something can be staring at us in the face, but we just don't see it. So disasters are good. We need to learn from them. Disasters happen because it's a, an opportunity. It, well, it's it's our body's way, it's the universe's way to, of telling us we're ready for new information. We're ready to learn something new. We're ready to embrace something new about ourselves or about the situation that we're in or the disaster that's happened. Um, so I'm going to read you just a little bit of this. So why do I need a disaster? The only time most of us ever learn anything is when we get hit over the head, um, uh, when we get hit over the back of the head. Why? Because it's easier not to change. So we keep doing what we're doing until we hit a brick wall. Take our health, for example. When do we change diets and start exercising? When our body falls apart. When the doctor says, if you don't change your lifestyle, you'll kill yourself. Suddenly, we're very motivated. In relationship, when do we usually tell each other how much we care? When the marriage is falling apart, when the family is falling apart. In school, when do we finally knuckle down and study? When we're about to fail. In business, when do we try new ideas and make the tough decisions? When we can't pay the bills. When do we finally learn about customer service after the customers have already left us? When do we usually pray? when our life is falling apart. Dear Lord, I know I haven't spoken to you since the last time the yogurt hit the fan. We learn our biggest lessons when things get rough. When you have, uh, when you have made the most important decisions in your life, when you, were, when you were on your knees after disasters, after knockbacks, when you've been kicked in the head, that's when you say to yourself, I'm not sick of being broke, sick of being kicked around. I'm, bit, I'm tired of being, uh, I don't, I can't even read that word. I'm going to do something. Success we celebrate, but we don't learn too much. Failure hurts, and that's when we get educated. In retrospect, we usually notice disasters were turning points. So, like, in a second, while I finish just reading this, can you think of a disaster that's happened, but actually, has that been a turning point for you? So, like, when you think of something that's happened, a disaster that's happened, had you know has a turning point outcome come from that 
So effective people don't go looking for problems, but when they get smacked in the mouth, they ask themselves, how do I need to change what I'm, uh, how do I need to change what I'm thinking and what I'm doing? How can I be better than I am now? Losers ignore all the warning signs. When the roof falls in, they ask, why does everything happen to me? We are creatures of habit. We keep doing what we're doing until we are forced to change. Many get, uh, Mary gets dumped by her boyfriend, Al. Devastated, she locks herself in her bedroom for a week. Then gradually, she starts to call all her old friends to meet, uh, and to meet new ones. She, sh she soon moves house and changes job. Within six months, she is happier, more confident than she has ever been in her life. She looks back on the disaster of losing Al as the best thing that ever happened to her. Fred gets sacked. Uh, uh, unable to find work, he's, he starts his own little business. For the first time in his life, he is his own boss and doing what he really wants to do. He still has his problems, but his life has new meaning and excitement and, and, all out, and, and all out of apparent disaster. So is life a series of painful disasters? Not necessarily. The universe is always nudging us with gentle signals. Uh, when we ignore the signals, it nudges us with a sledgehammer. Growth is the most painful when we resist it. So basically, we, need, we can tell ourselves one of two things. So when these disasters happen, we can tell ourselves one of two things. We can say, my life is a series of lessons I need happening in perfect order. So that's what we need to be telling. That, that is the perfect thing. That's what we want to tell ourselves. When something really crappy happens and we've got that horrible feeling in our belly and we think it's all coming in and we're not going to look forward, we need to look at it differently. And I feel blessed that I had not long just read this book because I really, I really feel like it got me back straight back on the, the right path straight away. The second thing we can think is life is a lottery, but I make the most of whatever comes along. Now this is kind of, this is where you sit if you're kind of dipping in and out of your self-development. So if you, if you kind of know what self-development is and you've read a few chapters of one book and a, you know, a couple of chapters of another one, you kind of get the idea that life is a lottery, you know, and I kind of make whatever of whatever. Um, and then you've got, why do bad things happen to me? So you get a disaster, the disaster happens and you have the victim mentality and you do not shift out of it. You will sit in there and you'll just think that shit happens to you all the time. And that may be true because if you keep thinking it, that disaster will spiral and spiral and spiral and that will, that's what will happen. So in a nutshell, with everything, we are not here to be punished, we are here to be educated. Every event has the potential to transform us and disasters have the greatest potential to change our thinking. Act as if every event has the purpose, uh, has a purpose and your life will have a purpose. Figure out why you need an experience, conquer it and you won't need it. So that's my training for this evening. I am going to do little bits of training for each of the chapters of this book because I just think it's incredible um, and I really recommend it. it. I looked it up, it's about 10, Carol lent this to me, but it is about £10 um, on Amazon and it's a really good read, particularly for people that don't like things that are full on and in depth. It's got nice short chapters. So follow your heart by Andrew Matthews. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Church, it comes over here to say where do we spend the day? But it's very cold out here when the snow marks you to the Wow, CJ! God, I think you literally had every pair of eyeballs glued to the screen then. And I think because that came from the heart, you said this is going to be non-scripted, this is going to come from the heart. Those are the greatest trainings, having a few key bullet points, but just coming from the heart. And I think that's exactly what you did. You were honest, you were vulnerable, you just shared your own experience. And the experience that you went through, I don't think I speak just for myself, that would have really taken me out. Like, really, really is one of my worst fears, having my whole Facebook wipe, because it seems so trivial. But like what you've said, it's a whole build-up of your life. And like, all my photos on Facebook, they're not anywhere else. And everything is, is in that little capsule, if you like. So if that was gone, I would just feel like 
something so precious was stripped away from me. And I don't think that I would have had the strength that you have had this week. And, you know, you are such a testament to, to strength and to the whole team. You're just an absolutely incredible person. What you had to deal with this week, yet you're carrying on with your business. You're just helping other people. You're plugging in. You're still on this call doing your training. You're just an amazing inspiration to everybody. And that training couldn't have been more perfect. I think sometimes we need to hear that. Like what you said about um, we only learn when we're hit over the head. It's true, but sometimes we don't always realize that. And when you asked, has anybody ever had a disaster happen to them that has been a good thing? Everybody on the chat was like, yes, 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 yes. But sometimes we don't realize it until afterwards. And actually, it was a good thing. It was a good turning point in our lives. So that was just such a useful training. All of the training tonight has just been incredible. So well done, CJ. That was brilliant. Okay, right. Two more speakers left. Guy, we've got a great night going tonight. Okay, so next we've got Lucy. So Lucy Collins joined Jane Brown in um, in business this year. I first met Lucy at Lucy West's car presentation. So two different Lucys there. And um, I said to Jane, I was like, "Oh, your friend Lucy. I think she's going to be totally overwhelmed by this car presentation." But Lucy got it. She totally got the business. She's very business focused, very business minded. She's an incredible person. She's genuinely such she's so focused she's like very laser focused and she wanted to train tonight on how to create a business building mindset lucy lives in what is it rotherham or sheffield i think it's sheffield actually isn't it yeah so please welcome lucy collins district manager qualification lucy collins no. Oh my gosh, thank you. Okay, well basically, I think I'm going to have to read off my notes. I was writing this whilst I was at work today. So yeah, I'm going to train on how to create um, a business building mindset. Um, have you got a Christmas jumper on, Lucy? I have. I'm in oh, the Christmas spirit. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Hang on. Let's have a look at your jumper, Lucy. Can you see it? Yeah, should have made everyone wear a Christmas jumper tonight. Okay. Right. I'm going to share my screen now. So let's hope this works. Like, okay. Okay. So tonight, um, how to create a business building mindset. So building a business actually starts with the mind first. So if you're aiming to grow your business to get to that next level, reach MVP or even 100 wide EMVP, then you need to be working on your mind first. Um, because nobody's reached the top levels of success in Auburn without working on their mindset. And if you ask any of the MVPs, they will all tell you the same thing. Work on your mindset to build your business. Why? Because wherever your mind goes, the rest will follow. And there are four ways you can start creating the kind of mindset you need to build a successful Arbon business because it all starts oh, with belief. Messed up some things. Huh? So to create this business building mindset, you'll need to learn how to believe in yourself, believe in others, believe in the products, and believe in the business. So number one is believe in yourself. This is, I put this first as it's the most important of them all because you need to be working on yourself and selling yourself and your own ability to do this business every single day. So if you're not doing personal development on a regular basis, then all our one. Touching my screen, messing it up. <laughs> What's that noise? <laughs> okay. I'm just going to look. I think everyone's on mute. I'll just look again. Oh, hang on. No, it's Sarah. There we go. Okay. So if you're not doing personal development on a regular basis, then all Arbonne will ever be is a little lipstick thing, a little milkshake thing that you do in your spare time and nothing else. So it's only when you start to practice personal development that you really begin to understand that Arbonne is a massive, and I repeat, massive global opportunity. And you have every right to be part of it, every right to think of earning and even earn astronomical sums of money that might seem unimaginable to you right now. So if you want to reach those top levels in Arbonne and you're not already doing personal development, then it's something you need to start doing as soon as possible. So why not today? What do I mean when I say personal development? I mean doing the things every day that makes you believe that you are a worthy person and you are worthy of phenomenal success. So this would include, for example, things like reading, meditation, exercise, 
visualization, journaling, and affirmations. It's a, sim it's a system that's deceptively simple. However, understand that you'll need to have a daily personal development routine because if you want to change your life, you must change the things you're doing every day because your day is your life. Making small changes consistently in your daily life will lead to massive success further down the line. So use your daily routine to work towards building your vision of who you could be and not who you have been led to believe you are. So why is believing in yourself so important? It's because thoughts create words, words create behavior, behavior creates habits, habits create values, and values create your destiny. So basically your thoughts are creating your destiny. So the things you're choosing to think and believe about yourself every day are creating who you'll be in a year, two years, five or ten years from now and who you will ultimately end up being. So it takes time and dedication to, to overturn a lifetime of negative limited thinking that you may not even be aware that you're doing right now. So personal development will help you identify what this is. It's this thinking that's holding you back and nothing else. So you need to be doing personal development every day to create the kind of mindset to build a positive image of yourself and ultimately to build a successful business. So if you're already doing personal development and you're not quite seeing the results that you want, then keep going. Keep going until you make it happen, until you see the results. You may not get it perfectly right all the time, but you're not here to be perfect. You're here to be authentic. In fact, you definitely won't be perfect all the time because life happens. And every time you fall off the horse, get back on it. Every time you fall, get back up. And personal development will help you get back up every time. In fact, once you start to make significant changes in your life, you might think that everything's suddenly going to get easier. You might think that as soon as you start doing this personal development thing, that your path will look something like this. The path will be immediately lit up and it will all be sweetness and light and little wood animals will come out of the forest to help tidy your house. Well, wrong. It'll probably look more like this. Um, because when you decide to make significant change, this could be when the point where all hell breaks loose. So your car will break down, your internet connection will stop working, babysitter will cancel, and your kitchen will set on fire. <laughs> so you may think this is a sign that you should give up, but it's actually the opposite. It's a very good sign that you are actually on the right path. You've made a deal with the universe and personal development will help you see the path and to keep going even when things get really tough. See, the thing is, the universe isn't your sugar mommy and it's not your sugar daddy. It's not going to magic up a white Mercedes for you just because you've decided on a whim that you quite fancy one. So you have to show that how much you want what you've asked for and go all out to get it. So what doing personal development means is that you'll find it easier to do the next right thing even when you don't want to, even when you're too tired, even when so much has happened during the day. It means that you can choose to do the things that will create a better future for yourself rather than the things that give you fleeting short-term comfort in the present moment, which will eventually lead you down the road to hell. The only difference between you and those at the top, and I don't just mean Arbonne, I mean the most successful people in the world who are at the top of their game, the only difference between you and them is their level of have personal development and their commitment to it. So if you see other people who are moving faster than you in their Arbonne business, all that means is that they are further along the path of personal development than you are. So if you're not where you want to be yet, then keep working on yourself with personal development. If you don't choose yourself, then nobody else will. And clearly when it comes to building your business, you want people to literally choose you, to choose you as their consultant, to choose you as a trusted health and wellness advisor. So choose yourself first every single day by deciding that you are worthy of working on yourself, that you are worthy of being chosen both by yourself and others. And that way you will create an unstoppable business building mindset. So number two, believe in others. So, sorry, <laughs> everyone can succeed in this business. You have to believe that every single person that you meet is capable of succeeding in Arbonne because that is the truth. Understand that most people have been downtrodden into accepting lives that are less than what they deserve. Whether they are successful or not in Arbonne is just a matter of what they believe is possible for themselves. So don't try to second guess who will be successful in this business. Believe in everyone. 
don't overlook people who don't have professional inverted commas skilled inverted commas experience as they could prove to be a superstar in your business. They are the grafters who do the jobs that no one else wants to do, the invisible things that go unnoticed that make everyone's lives easier. Likewise, even people you think have brilliant professional jobs are still not performing at their true potential. They're probably dying on the inside and would snap your hand off to be offered a chance to own their own lives instead of being owned and dictated to by their own jobs. So outwardly, they may look very successful. However, most of them are only performing well in comparison to everyone else whose potential has been suffocated in this system we've been raising, which causes us to deny our personal greatness. So believe in everyone. It's not your business to prejudge anyone. The only thing you need to be doing is offering this, these products and this business opportunity to every kind of person that you meet. There's no such thing as a typical MVP in terms of the background that they come from because everyone has the potential to make it. So your role as a sponsor is to be your team's biggest cheerleader and believe that ev with every ounce of your being that they can do this. That being said, your consultants have to want this for themselves. You cannot do it for them and you cannot want it for them. So learn when and where to place your energy and give them time whilst they are just so accepting themselves and believing that they're the only person responsible for creating their success and creating their destiny. So anyone can succeed. All they have to be is coachable. So listen to what your consultants are saying because they will tell you exactly what they need. They will reveal exactly what they think about themselves so you can understand the kind of personal development coaching that will help them move forward in their life and in their business. And also, so you can offer them the kind of practical business coaching that will help them develop in the competency area, in the, in the areas that they need it most. So you are a people builder. You build people first and they go on to build your business. So believe in other people and genuinely want to help them. This is what you're here for give people the gift of amazing products. And if they choose to join your business, the, bis the gift of time freedom, <laughs> sorry, the gift of time freedom and financial freedom. And that is an amazing gift to give to other people. You will create a phenomenal business when you go in with a mindset to give people what they need in order to create a successful life for themselves. Especially when you do this over and over and over again, your giving will come back to you in many positive ways to help you build your business. So be a giver, not a getter. So giving comes from a place of abundance and getting comes from a place of lack. So do you see that you can't create abundance from a place of lack? It just doesn't work. So approach all your Arbonne activity with a giving mindset. Making a success of Arbonne means you give as much to other people as possible. So first of all, believe that they are worthy of receiving this amazing gift of Arbonne, which is the best skincare and nutrition systems in the world, plus the chance to create time and financial freedom for themselves. So when you meet people as part of doing Arbonne, they are trying to answer two questions. And they are, can I trust you? And do I like you? They're probably not actually aware that they are thinking this, and they also not questions that you can consciously answer without sounding like a bit of a weirdo. So you provide the answer in the way you come across and that all comes down to mindset. So it doesn't matter how charming, funny and witty you are, how amazingly you've explained the business and the products. If you've gone in there with a getting mindset, they also consciously know that that's what you're there for. To get QV, to get an order in, to get access to their friendship group, to get a new consultant, to get you to the next level of promotion, get, 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 get. It doesn't matter how well you think you've hidden your intentions, your prospects will pick up on them. So this whole getting mentality is not good for building your business because people just know when you're there for yourself and not for them. And they probably won't become a client and they probably won't join your business. And if they do, they won't stay. So what happens when you chase something? That's right, it runs away. So on the other hand, when you go to product workshops or one-to-ones or any kind of Arbonne activity event, go with the mindset that you are there to give as much as possible. You are there to see if you can give them a solution to, the, to their problems, whether that's health and wellness or time and money. So give them the right answer to those questions. They do trust you and they do like you. Giving creates abundance. So give from yourself and give from Arbonne. 
give yourself emotionally because that's how people connect with you. Let them have enjoyed meeting you. That should be one of your main aims. Be generous, be passionate, be open. And at one-to-ones, for example, go with the attention of giving people the chance to dream and create a life for themselves that they never thought possible. At product workshops, you could give the guests a fun time, give the host a gift, give out free sam- samples of, as prizes, give, 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 and show what amazing, caring, and giving company Arbonne is and show that you are too. So give without expecting to receive. And it's this, will, it's, it's this will, which will create a giving mindset that will help you explode your business. So, and number three is believe in the products. So, as part of this, I'm just going to talk a little bit about discounting um, because discounting um, is a fantastic way to bring in QV. However, use discounting wisely and understand what it does for your business and what it doesn't. For example, online flash sales are an excellent way to generate QV, especially if you're offering into Q current clients as a kind of thank you and to draw up some extra sales but discounting as a general rule probably won't attract new clients who will become loyal customers in this respect discounting is a business strategy that could end up costing you in the end if you are attempting to use it as a way to attract new clients this is because when you find people who believe what you believe they are prepared to pay premium or suffer in an inconvenience to have access to the products or services you are offering That's how powerful belief is. So develop your belief in the products and find the people who share that belief. Spend your time discovering the people who will buy from your business no matter what, and not just when things are on on discount. So that's how you build a loyal customer base. Arbon products are the best products in the world, created by one of the best companies in the world. If you regularly offer discounts on products because you feel in the back of your mind that they're too expensive and otherwise people wouldn't buy them, then that's because you don't believe enough in the products. So let me just say that Arbonne products are already discounted up to 80% just for the simple fact that they are sold through network marketing. They will cost several times more if they were sold via traditional retail. And the vast majority of people sitting on this call would not be able to afford them if they were sold in shops. Or if they could, they will be maxing out the credit cards and remortgaging the houses um, that's how much Arbonne products are already discounted. They are already being offered at the best possible price. On top of this, as you know, preferred clients receive that free gift with the qualifying order and clients have access to monthly flash sales and buy one get one free sales. So over the course of the year, they're able to receive hundreds of pounds of products for free. So you don't need to be offering discounts as a standard business practice to attract new clients because the value of what Arbonne so the value of what people are purchasing when they choose Arbonne is out of this world. So Arbonne products are some of the best in the world. What you're basically gifting people when you share Arbonne is gold dust. So at the beginning, many people can feel the products are expensive. So on the face of it, yes, they do cost more than what most people would spend on personal care products. It's fine to admit that if you keep on system, So if you keep insisting that they aren't expensive, it could make people feel like you're not listening and you don't really understand where they're coming from. So meet people where they are and explain the value of what they're purchasing. You're not here to convince anyone of the need to have these products in their lives. You are looking for the people who appreciate these products and would do anything to make sure they can use them every single day. So you're not just sharing products. With Arbonne, for example, you are giving a child the very best start in life by making sure they use toxin-free products from birth for the rest of their life. You are helping people decrease the likelihood that they will develop cancer. You are giving someone with acne the confidence to go out without makeup for the first time ever. You are helping someone who's been been through a divorce roll back the years and get back out on the dating scene again. You're helping people to like what they see in the mirror for the first time in their lives. You are giving people permission to like and accept themselves, and that is an incredibly powerful thing. That is the value of what you're giving when you share Arbonne products. So believe that they are the very best products on the planet and share and recommend them with confidence. And that's how your belief in the products will create a business building mindset. So my fourth point, believe in the business. So network marketing is the business of the 21st century. It is the best case for optimism in the history of capitalism. 
So what that means is there is no other industry in the world where a person can set up a business for a very low cost and with no prior experience and no skills and earn more money than they could ever Im imagine spending. They can also do this from the comfort of their own home with very low ongoing costs. Is there any other way that you can imagine that happening? So in the, in the traditional employment market, nobody's paid what they're worth. They're not paid fairly for investing the most valuable commodity they have into, the, into their employment, which is time, well, their life essentially. So on top of this, job opportunities are shrinking at a faster rate any other time, than any other time in history. The economy is, is doing just fine, however. The only thing that's changed is that the economy will never again provide the levels of employment that it did in the past, like never again. Those days are over. So it's not just jobs that are disappearing. Pensions are also being spirited away because people are living for longer than what employers are prepared to pay for. So the rules of the, of the past don't apply anymore and it's time to find a new way to make a living. So profound change is coming. That may sound a little scary for many people, but when you think about it, we're actually living through a brilliant, unique moment in, in human history when people will have to unlearn everything they thought they knew and relearn. They will need to learn their worth and be paid for the value that they bring to others. So for this reason, network marketing is booming. It's a legitimate business vehicle and it's estimated that network marketing generates $178 billion in annual retail sales. So that's compared to 80 billion in the movie industry and 16 billion in the music industry. And this is an industry that's still only in its infancy. And a massive 40% of that 178 billion is of paid to ICs in the form of commission. So let's have a look at how those figures break down. So $71 billion per year is paid to independent consultants. That's $6 billion a month or $200 million a day. So you might think that most of this would go to the top earners um, in network marketing companies, but actually 98% of those revenues are paid to, norm to, the normal, to normal people, to normal ICs. So I personally believe that Arbonne is the very best network marketing company to build a business with. There's no better company out there, either in network marketing or traditional business, as far as I'm concerned. So Arbonne's business is going from strength to strength. Its UK sales revenue has doubled every two years since 2008. So Arbonne has done phenomenally well so far, and guess what, it's only the beginning. Arbonne has barely scratched the surface of, it, of its potential UK and global sales revenue. revenues. So you are a pioneer, and you've accepted a once in a lifetime opportunity to join a well-established business that is not yet globalized. So make sure that you take it with both hands and make the best of it. The best will probably turn out to be better than anything you've ever imagined before. So believe in this industry that's made more millionaires than any other and use the belief to create the mindset that you could build a multi-million pound international business in much less time than most people will spend working towards a meager retirement. So just to recap, these are the four types of belief that are the ways that you can create a business building mindset that could lead you to massive financial returns if you dig deep and say the course. So believe in yourself, believe in others, believe in the products and believe in the business. Believe because Arbonne is changing the way that people do business and what people believe is possible for themselves all over the world. Like a revolution is coming and believe because Arbonne is the company that will change the face of the network marketing industry and transform the lives of the thousands of people who are involved in it. Ta-da, I finished. <laughs> <laughs> wow what an amazing trainer do you know what james written in the chat several times how proud she is james did you want to unmute and say what you said <laughs> I don't know, honestly i could actually cry because <laughs> <laughs> I said, I can't believe that you are the same girl that I met at that confidence speaking training course we went on. Honestly, it's so, yeah. it's so emotional. Your training. I felt, like, just... I felt like I was running out of breath <laughs> trying to do it all. Because I normally <laughs> like doing public speaking stuff, but I felt like I couldn't say it like in a natural way because I had to read it. 
No, Lucy, honestly, 100%, absolutely fantastic training. Huge well done. So, so oh. proud. Thank you. <laughs> it was really, really great. Lucy, if you just click um, stop screen share, it'll make it all go back to normal. Okay, hang on. Yeah, that was fantastic. Absolutely amazing. And then as Charlotte said um, on the chat, it was really grounding. The chat has gone crazy. I think it was just what everybody needed. And I echo what Jane said. When I first met you, to where you are now, I mean, oh my God, what a transformation. And the personal growth, the self-development, you've just... Yeah. You, you know, you've obviously invested in yourself. So anybody that's, that might be sat here tonight watching this call thinking, oh my God, Lucy's amazing or... or <laughs> I can't do that. Know that most of the trainers tonight who are amazing didn't start out that way. Like everybody starts out in their own journey. And when I yeah. first met Lucy, Lucy, you'd never have done that a few months ago, would you? Probably not, no. <laughs> so have belief, if you're watching this tonight thinking, God, you know, all these people are just incredible speaking. Not everybody starts out that way. It is the self-development and it is the confidence from growing this business. I really took from that, Lucy, about what you said about the gold dust and about how these products are ultra premium, but you know, pe find people that are gonna appreciate them. And for me, when I started this business, my friends didn't use ultra premium products. They used cheap mm. products like me. So I could easily have said, I'm not gonna build this business because my friends use cheap products. But if I hadn't have built this business, I wouldn't be where I am now. You know, I found people mm. that I didn't already know to buy the products because they appreciate them, they want them, they want that gold dust. And there are a lot of people out there. The figures that you showed, Lucy, were incredible about the industry and how much is paid out in commissions. It's just remarkable. I thought the whole of that training was amazing and discount mm. widely. I loved it, good advice. Yeah. Right. Okay, so let's move on to our last speaker. So we've got Sarah Gavin, who's training. <laughs> now, Sarah um, actually did this training last month, but unfortunately, my um, my laptop wasn't working properly, so I wasn't able to record it. So Sarah's going to train tonight on confidence building and inspiration, which she did last month, and it absolutely everybody was just amazed by this girl. She is also another one like Lucy that started off really shy, but it's blowing everybody out the water. So I'm really looking forward to hearing this training properly. Now I've not got technical issues. So please welcome Sarah Gavin, who's in London with her little boy Kelvin. And it looks like she's cooking in the kitchen. <laughs> My dad's just getting rid of Kelvin now. <laughs> All right, um, hi everyone. Um, I hope you can. I can encourage you and inspire you as much as you all inspire me. Um, what a great lineup of brave, motivated, motivating, and courageous people again um, to teach us all and empower us. Um, I feel blessed to be allowed to share some of my experiences and quotes. I love to keep you all going, especially when the going gets tough which we all know happens quite a lot. When you face certain challenges and situations in Arbon. So tonight I'm going to talk about confidence, which affects everybody, even in our daily lives, not just when you're approaching someone new about Arbon, like that nice lady you met in the park or the friendly, joking mum at playgroup, who you get on with, like a house on fire, but you don't want to burn this new delicate friendship because you genuinely like her and want to help her to use ABC baby care range on her two little girls. Okay, the secret to living well is eat half, walk double, laugh triple, and love without measure. Keep your face always towards the sunshine and shadows will fall behind you. Surround yourself with the dreamers and the doers, the believers and the thinkers. But most of all, surround yourself with those who see greatness within you, even when you don't see it yourself. I think that happens to all of us quite a lot. Um, better things are coming, remember that. Sometimes stepping outside the box can change the view. Outside your personal bubble, there's a whole universe just waiting to be explored. Your state of mind is a magnet that creates your reality. I think that's really true. I've already touched that one tonight. Um, you're always one decision away from a totally different life. No matter how many people believe in you or don't believe in you, 
you must be the ultimate believer in yourself. Say, I love myself every day and feel each word. Don't let yourself be controlled by three things, people, money, or past experiences. And life is an open landscape filled with endless possibilities. Okay, there's more. Believe in your dreams, believe in your visions, believe in yourself. All you need is a little bit of faith and patience. Every small step in the right direction becomes the start of something amazing. Look for something positive in each day. Even if some days you have to look a little harder. Your purpose is to be you. Let your spirit float on the wings of love. All is well and you are loved. If you want to fly, give up everything that weighs you down. You are strong when you know your weaknesses. You are beautiful when you appreciate your flaws. You are wise when you learn from your mistakes. Sometimes the people around you won't understand your journey. They don't need to, it's not for them. Okay, and if you think um, it might help someone's life to become much more enjoyable and healthy, just do it. Um, talk to them about Arbonne. Give them the key to open the door to a whole new world, which is Arbonne. Remember how you felt before you had fistics or shakes or Arbonne makeup. Um, the makeup deserves an award or something extravagant to show how amazing it is. I would. I could go on and on, sorry. Hold on, I'm just going to close the door. Okay. Um, there are so many great products that I could not see myself living without anymore. anymore. We have a duty to pass on this gift of Arbonne to as many people we come into contact with as possible. Do not think of what, you, what can go wrong. Think of what could go right. And think of all the possibilities. Be the voice of action, not the quiet one in the corner, unless you're doing your personal development. Um, and there's a few more things I wanted to say. Stay positive. Um, remember, there will always be negative people you want to, who want to rain on your parade. Don't give up. The beginning is always the hardest. And when you follow up with people, if you're ignored, wait about five to seven, seven days. Um, stay cool. Keep patient. Um, I'd say on Facebook, make your posts quite personal. Um, respectful of others who have posted in groups. Um, keep your Facebook positive. No dirty laundry. Um, look through your Facebook as if you're looking, as if you were looking to join you. So um, try and share other people's promotions and include things like that will keep people interested and make them want to join up and get involved. Um, and I'd say, yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. Thanks. Fantastic, Sarah. And thank you for doing that again. Bless Sarah. She did that whole Sorry. training on last month's area training and then we couldn't record, the internet was playing up, we had enormous technical difficulties. Yeah. So I said, Sarah, please, can you do it again? And bless her, she said, yeah. And Sarah, I've just put in the chat, you've come so far. You obviously joined your business, joined Stacey Blackness team um, halfway through the yeah. year. And look how far you've come. <laughs> yeah, I know. That is incredible. I and, hey? I, said, I can feel it a lot, um, the difference in myself and probably over the past few months. Yeah. Yeah, and the self-development, yeah. I mean, and again, I echo what I said when Lucy did her training, the self-development just makes a massive, massive difference to people, and I loved everything you said then, the little things about what you said about building your confidence, using your Facebook like a, you would a shop window, don't air your dirty laundry, fantastic yeah. training, so I'm so proud of everybody, you Sarah and everybody else tonight, really well done Sarah. Thank you, thanks a lot.
Okay, so that wraps up our last ever monthly area training and our last training of the whole year. We're going to have Christmas at the weekend, New Year's at the weekend after. So I just want to say a massive thank you to all of the trainers. So thank you to District Manager to be this month, Cat Thwaite. We've got District Manager to be Gemma Wilford. Area Manager Qualification to be this month, Carl and Carpenter or CJ. Uh, district manager to be Lucy Collins. I'm not sure if you're completing this month or next month. And then we've got district manager to be Sarah Gavin. So what an amazing lineup tonight. It's been incredible, incredible call, incredible speakers, incredible people on the chat. Well done, everybody, for a great night. And thank you all for plugging in on a Monday night. It's been an absolute pleasure to host this incredible call. Thank you so much, everybody. Happy Christmas! Snow is falling.